Oh, that's nice. Good morning, you guys. I can I take my jacket off? Yeah. Sorry. Right. I live. Get comfortable, said Jay. I like that. So, but you guys get comfortable too. But make sure you look your best, okay? So, this morning I came all the way from Seattle, Washington, where I live, to come and be with you. Is that okay? Say yes. Yes. And we're going to work together. And all these folks are around the room to watch you work because you're so excellent. Is that okay? Say yes. Yes. Okay. So this morning, you're Mrs. Sailor's class, right? Yes. yes. This morning, we're going to be working on some things that you all have been working on. And up on my screen, I have a theme question. Could everyone read that to me, please? What is my heritage? Right now, at your table, and by the way, would you mind sitting right here so you can talk to people? Yeah. Would you guys mind talking about that question? What is my heritage? Tell each other what you think that question is asking about. Say, our heritage is, or my heritage is. Talk to the people at your table. On your mark, get set, talk. I just want to hear you talk. Okay, stop and look at me. Thumbs up if you had a good conversation. You weren't talking? What would you say if you would have been talking? What could he say? Someone give it to me like this. Help him out, okay? What could he say? Um, that his heritage is um, like he got heritage from his um, family generation to generation. Generation to generation, a heritage from your family. You could say that, right? What, what else could he say? He could have said that maybe my mom and my dad are certain heritage and they're my grandma and grandpa because their mom and dad passed their heritage down to them. Nice! So he could have spoken about, you know, generation to generation, grandparents to parents to ourselves, or caregiver to caregiver, or auntie <coughs> and uncle to auntie and uncle, right? We could have said it that way. Thank you. Anything else our friend could have said? Right back there. Um, he could have said um, that heritage is something that was passed down from your ancestors from generation to generation until it finally got to you. <laughs> could everyone say the word ancestors? Ancestors. Absolutely. Let's think about some things that are involved in our big question, what is my heritage? Let's think about together some of the things that make Heritage. Um, what's one thing? Yes. One thing that can involve that is, has a lot to do with her heritage is, is the way like certain customs are passed down from generation to generation by your ancestors. Oh, nice. So the word I heard is customs. Can everyone see it if I write it right here? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> what other things come to mind? Specific words. Yes. Culture. Nice. So what do you mean by culture? Like, um, like it's someone's, um, what, like, what they are, like, that's what, like, their culture is, something that their parents were, like, can't really explain it, but. I like the way you're thinking about it. Is it like my culture is, um, my parents' parents were from Germany? So part of my culture might be German, like that? Okay, what else? Ooh, I love it! You said recipes. Is it okay if I write food? Yeah. Okay. Making me hungry. <laughs> oh, I'm hungry too. Yeah. What do you want to say, Jay? Oh, I like the way you're thinking back. 
What would you infer or predict he's thinking about right there? Um, I just had, had something to say. Okay. You know how you said you were, that you, you might be German? Yeah. I'm three quarters German. Nice! And we have that in common, hey? That's good, yes. Uh, religion? Okay, so like faith or religion, we could say? Nice. Anything else? Yes. Boundary? Come again? Boundary, like space? Boundary, like space. Like your personal space? Like your own like, boundary. Like oh, you think that maybe our boundaries are culturally specific? Yeah. And in some cultures, it's okay to stand real close to each other. In some cultures, you try to stay apart. In some cultures, you look at each other in your eyes. And some you look down. And sometimes you shake hands. And sometimes you never shake hands. Mm -hmm. Those are all culturally specific norms, the way of being in a specific culture, right? That's nice. What else? Um, art. Ooh, yes! So our customs, our culture, our food, our faith, our art. Just go ahead and say at the table, what would you add to the list? Music. Music. Dance, beliefs, traditions, celebrations. I can tell you guys have been soaking in that question, what is my heritage? Because when I squeeze you, all these great words come out. And I'm going to put a rectangle around some words that I would like you to concentrate on today. Is that okay? Yes. Okay, so I would like you to concentrate on food, on art, on dance, on music, on celebrations, on clothing. <coughs> it's not that the others aren't important, but for today, we're just going to focus on food, art, music, dance, celebrations, and clothing. Is that okay? Say yes. 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 Okay, Jay, what do you want to say? I listen to music every day when I wake up. You do? What kind of music do you like? Mm, like country. Country. Like he was born on a farm, and whenever he had a work, he had to listen to country music. Nice. So part of your heritage is a tradition of enjoying country music. Because your grandfather, while he was working, he was an agri... Uh, nice! An agricultural worker. Yeah! And so he liked country music. Right? Okay, at your table, just hum a little something that sounds country right now. Oh. <laughs> uh, maybe you can talk like... Maybe you can talk like this? Yeah. Say boots getting buggy. <laughs> what else would you say? Country song. Yeah. Uh, that maybe my kids they made uh the sombreros. Oh, so yeah. So you're thinking about a Mexican culture that might have as part of their clothing a sombrero or a hat. Yeah. They might also have. My wife was born in Mexico, and her music is called Tejano music, which is like a mixture of Texas and Mexico and it has accordion and you kind of dance to it. Yeah, like, yeah, exactly like that, Jay. And sort of uh, like um, accordion m music and there's, uh, there's a lot of, uh, like my kid's grandfather says, ah when the music plays, right? It's just part of the tradition. Could you guys show me, by the way, you're sitting in open in your theme readers. We're going to open up to page 37. And I'm looking for the group that's ready first. You're already there. Thank you very much. Got it? I'm looking for the group that's ready. And then I need to ask Miss Saylor. Is she in the room? Yeah. Hey, how are you? Oh, I'm well. Do you have those post it notes we talked about? If not, there's some over on the librarian's desk that we can borrow. You're all there? You cool, Jay? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. On that picture on the far right, my grandpa has bagpipes. Bagpipes? Yeah, and I play them. You play them? 
Wow, that's pretty cool. Bagpipes might be part of an Irish tradition or a Scottish tradition. Do you know what they sound like? Yeah. They're, okay. While we're waiting for Miss Saylor, let's put our hands down and take a walk through this selection. This is a biography. Talk at your table about what a biography is. I'm going to ask Mrs. Saylor or Miss Saylor to drop one of these or two of these at every one of your tables, the little pads. So Mrs. Saylor is dropping pads of sticky notes or adhesive labels post-it notes, and I'd like right now everyone at your table to take three of them. So everyone needs to have three post-it notes, cool? And in the corner of your post-it note, all three, please put your name. Okay, so you'll need to write your name very quickly, three times. I'll wait for you to be ready. Are you good? Yeah. Okay, show me, don't tell me, all right? Wow. I can already tell that the Pink Panthers are awesome and the Bobcats are awesome. There's some other groups that are awesome too that I can't remember their names. What? Mark Levine, You guys have some great names. Bobcats are my favorite team. Bobcats are your favorite team? Are you a Bobcat? No. I'm, I'm, um, a group of, uh, team I group. see. Oh, so, you like a team that maybe plays soccer? Football. Football? Yeah. <gasps> oh, my word! Can I add something to uh, this yes. list? Say yes. Sports. Yes. What am I going to add? Sports. Okay, a sport. sports. I'm going to do sports because it'll cover all things related to sports. I heard you guys talking about specific ones. I'm going to put a rectangle around sports, so that could be a word that you think of. You want to say what? Um, oh, thank you. We don't need it just right now, but thank you for pointing that out. My computer goes to sleep, but my students don't. So here's what you're going to do. Show me by the way you're sitting. I'll get your questions in a few minutes. You've already read My Name is Celia? Yeah. Say yes. 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 Okay, now, you're going to go through every page of this biography of Celia Cruz and you're going to look for illustrations and places in the text. What do I mean when I say places in the text? Yes. Places in the words that make you think of one of these things. Food, art, sports, music, dance, celebrations, or clothing. So right now, put your hand down for a second because we're going to work together. Right now, could you choose, you have three post-its, right? Yeah. Could you choose which of those words you're going to emphasize and on one of your post-its write food or dance or clothing. Choose three different parts of culture you choose, okay? Do you guys want to choose independently or collaboratively? Do you want to choose as a team, as a table, or on your own? You guys decide, however, just get it done. Three post-its, three words. Oh, I love the language. I heard someone say, let's do. And I heard someone say, I'm going to work on my own. That's cool. You guys all right? Yep. So one post, it'll say food. Another post, it'll say dance. Another post, got it? Okay. And by the time I count to four, I want everyone to be ready. One. And show me what ready looks like, because I'm 50. You guys, am I being courteous, too? Am I being... Oh, I'm, I would never be mean, I promise. 
Remember, I can hear everything you say. I have supersonic hearing. Three. of text, this selection that's a biography that we've already read, and we've gone through it again, and we've thought of specific parts of culture that are in the biography, and we've labeled them, right? Okay, I just want one person to give me an example of where they placed their post-it and why, and I want everyone to listen to their words. Cool? Put your hands down. I'm just going to kind of say... Would you mind, sir? Um, I did food on the horses. They ate rice, beans, and bananas. What page is that, sir? Um, 43. So could you do it like this? On page 43, I placed food where they put. Would you do that for me? Let's listen to our colleague, you guys. Listen to what he does. Go for it. Start with on page. Can you start with on page da da da? On page 43, nice. I placed food on where they said they ate rice, beans, and bananas. <laughs> all right. That's awesome. So, do, could you all do what our friend just did, but we're not really going to do it? Would you know how to do it? Yeah. Just yeah. practice it once, like you were talking to your colleagues, but don't really do it. Just pick one out and say, on page da da da, I put, but don't do food. Do another one. Go ahead. Just talk to yourself. On page 38, I put, I see that hand, sir. You're doing good. Text. And look at me. You know, when you're reading about Celia, oh, wait, I'm waiting. Close your text and look at me. Close your text and look at me. Close your text and look at me. Can you look my way, sir? Awesome. Okay. You guys are doing really, really well. When you reread the biography of Celia Cruz, I'm sure you're doing a really nice job. What I want you to do is think about three specific vocabulary words. And the nice thing is, I already heard one gentleman talk about one of the three vocabulary words we're emphasizing today, which was boundaries. And the three vocabulary words I want us to think about are shimmer, competition, and boundaries. I'm going to do three things with these words. I'm going to define it. I'm going to explain it. I'm going to use it in a sentence. And I'm going to use it in a question. Is that OK? Yeah. Watch me now. When something shimmer, when something shimmers, it shines beautifully. Celia's dress shimmered as she danced. Do you have some clothing that shimmers? Did you hear how I did that? Yeah. Okay, you don't really have to answer me. Competition. I'm going to try it now. Competition is when we play a game or engage in an activity and we think of winning or doing our best. I swam in a swimming competition this weekend. Are you part of a soccer competition? Got it? Okay, could someone do what I just did for boundaries? So first, define or explain it. Um, a boundary is something like 
like if someone's in your space. Um, I have a um, boundary that my brother always comes into my space and I ask him if he can come out. So that was define or explain, then a sentence, perfect. Now ask a question with boundaries in it. Um, does anyone have a boundary? <laughs> nice job. Do you all think you could do that if I ask you to? Uh, yeah. Great. We're not really going to do that today. We're done with vocabulary, right? So shimmer is something shiny and beautiful. Competition is something where we're trying to do our best against someone else or something else. And boundaries are like our personal space, or maybe some countries <coughs> have boundaries. Or Billings has a boundary, right? OK, I think we're good with that. Now, you guys are awesome. By the way, I'm going to start with Jay. Is that OK? And we're going to practice something else this morning. Because there's some things in the biography of Cecilia Cruz that I want us to remember today. Do you guys have a piece of paper with you? Yeah. Could you write on that piece of paper this word? Can you all see that? Say yes. Yes. I know this room isn't ideal for us, but the teachers are watching us, so we had to come to the library if that's okay. So you're writing metaphor on your paper. And a metaphor is a way of describing something so that when we read about it or talk about it, we can understand it more clearly. All right? Now, Jay, when I spell your name J, do I just use capital J? Or do I spell J-A-Y? Which do you prefer? J. Just J. Capital J. OK. So I'm going to put quotes around it just because I want to remember that that's your name. Could everyone do that just like I did, please? Now, I'm going to write a metaphor about J. Is that OK? Say yes. 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 OK. Please don't say no. OK. Is a, everyone write that. Is a what I really like about Miss Saylor's class is that you all are so curious. You're amazingly positive about each other. I can tell that about you already. I want to say something really positive about Jay, and I'm going to do it as a metaphor. I'm going to say Jay is a rocket. And the reason I said that is because I've noticed this morning that Jay does things very quickly and with great strength. And he gets there fast, just as a rocket would. So when I think of you in the future, I'm going to think, Jay is a rocket. He gets there fast. He's strong, smart. He flies over the others. Are you with me? Yeah. All right. Tell me your first name. Rhythm. So, Rhythm, can you spell your name for me? R-E-Y-T-H-A-M. A-M. You have a unique spelling. I like that. What are we going to write right here, you guys? Go ahead and say it. Is A. Is A. Now, is Jay really a rocket? No. In a literal sense, Jay is a male, Jay is a student, Jay is a person, right? But in a metaphor, we use symbolic language that makes us think of the essence of who Jay is. Like, Jay is a rocket. Jay is a tree. Jay is a what? Jay is a flying little bird. Oh, Jay is a flying little bird. <laughs> Tweet, tweet, right? So you you added some descriptive language or adjectives before your your object there. That was nice, Jay. But rhythm, I don't know rhythm very well. But the first thing I noticed about rhythm this morning is um, how colorful her clothing and the little like hair extension braids in her hair are, and her skirts all sparkly. 
So what could I say about rhythm that would be a metaphor? I don't want you to say J is a girl or J is a person. I want you to think of something kind to say that would be symbolic like J is a rocket, but for rhythm. Please quietly talk at your table about what it could be. Could you all watch right here? I heard one. Did I scare you? No. Okay, show me by the way you're sitting that you're excellent. Watch me right. Are you with me? Yeah. R A. When you know what I'm going to write, please give me a quiet hand. Don't say it out loud. Whisper it. Whisper it. Nice. That's a metaphor about rainbow that I heard one of you say. She's not really a rainbow. But when you look at her, you think of a rainbow, and it kind of captures the essence of who she is this morning. Do you like that rhythm? I kind of like it too. She's a colorful little rainbow. She's a sparkling little star. She's 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 golden. Ooh, check it out. He used the word shimmer. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, so do you guys know what metaphor it is? Yes. Okay, when you read Celia Cruz's biography, again, you could go through and look for different metaphors that the author uses to capture the essence of Celia. Okay? Is that all right? Okay, we'll go through and find some in the text in a few minutes, but we need to move forward because of time. I have to put my secret code. Oh, I see what time it is. No problem. Okay, so now we're going to move a little bit. We've talked about metaphor. Now we're going to talk about something else that authors do when they're writing a biography. And it's also a skill that we need to have when we read text that is complex. Right now at your table, explain what I mean when I say text that is complex.